Hey there, X Traders, and welcome to today's video. It's going to be hopefully smaller than previous videos because it's a very complicated topic. So what I decided to do was split this up into uh, it's, the main topic is of course spreads, and uh, I said in the previous video where I covered 101 trading uh, in a vis visual format, which I'm going to link to right here, that um, spreads are eh, they're, they're sort of complicated, although I do believe that people make it out uh, more difficult than it really is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this between um, basically the most basic type of spread, which is a vertical spread, which are going to be like these six um, uh, slides right here. And then in the next uh, video, I will go into uh, basically the other type of spread, which is uh, one that includes the factor of time. So in the first six slides of this presentation, which is going to be this video right here, I will cover vertical spreads, which is the simplest kind of spread. And then in the second video, so it's going to be a two-part series, I'm going to talk about calendar spreads. And basically the difference between these two is, let's say it is mostly the time factor, all right? And, uh, and then we'll get into why that is. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get uh, notifications on uh, the latest videos on different topics that we cover in the, um, the Xtrades community. They get posted on the Discord Xtrades community. And uh, you can also follow us on Twitter. And I'll go ahead and leave all those links in the description below. So let's dive right into spreads. Okay, so <clears throat> um, a incredibly quick uh, recap of time decay in options. Basically, time decay is, or, or let's just say time, is what makes <clears throat> uh, options possible. Okay, uh, otherwise uh, it, uh, it it wouldn't be, I guess, possible because. The difference between stocks and options is that in stocks, you get into a trade, uh, obviously buy low, sell high, and then you get out whenever you want to. But with options, you can't really get out whenever you want to. You have to get out before expiration, which is marked here in bright danger precaution red. Okay, so uh, that is the main difference, uh, the biggest difference between stocks and options. In options, you have to get out before the ship sinks, basically it always sinks. Time eventually runs out and you reach expiry and that is when the entire contract goes to zero, which is why in the previous video, which I linked to right here, um, we talked about, or we compared it, we compared options to a hot potato, okay? So um, basically somebody decides to take a guess on what the price of a stock is going to be in the future um, and there's two sides to every bet, obviously. There has to be a, uh, a winner and a loser. And uh, basically, the person who writes the option contract and then uh, sells it, of course, is betting that it the option will be out of the money, which means it won't be at that strike price at that expiration date. And whoever bought the call, which is obviously on the opposite side or believes the opposite, uh, is basically saying, yes, that stock will be at that strike price on that expiration. Okay, so uh, from then on it becomes this game of hot potato. Uh, and one of the things that we must keep in mind is that uh, the option price, okay, the value of the, your option is uh, going to fluctuate obviously um, up or down and because from the moment it is conceived or you know created or written uh, uh, actually, that option is the farthest from expiration that it can be. So it is incredibly, the unknown is, let's say, greater. There are a lot of things that can happen between time zero and time expiry that will change the price of that option. If it goes above the strike price, then it increases in value. If it goes below, it decreases in value. And a lot of things, you know, earnings, economic data, we covered this in this video here, which is uh, basic trading strategy, uh, things that affect the option price, upgrades, downgrades, 
um, you know, all of those things, there are so many of those individual, you know, factors that could um, affect the price option. And, and basically, they, they are eliminated one by one as time goes by. And the, the closer you get to expiration, then the more the more certain we are that the price is not going to deviate too much. If the option the option price starts, you know, at ten, and that and then that option price is basically going to fluctuate between ten, twenty, you know, zero, and then eventually nineteen, you know, two, eighteen, five, and eventually it's going to land. Let's say that it is going to land at zero. Then basically, at expiration, it's going to be somewhere between nine and 11 okay so the closer you get the expiration the more we know with uh with highest precision what that price final price is going to be so that is what gives options their value basically the uncertainty of both parties the buyer and the seller um of what the actual final price is going to be on expiration okay and the closer you get to expiration then it's easier to tell than who's going to be the winner Okay, and that is when that uncertainty basically flows out of the option, and then that is also why the option's value eventually drops to zero because of that time decay. The closer you get to expiration until it is worth actually zero. Uh, the slowest time decay happens at the beginning, and then the fastest time decay happens towards the end. So when you buy an option, it's going to rocket. It probably going to rocket. It's probably going to rocket more around near expiration date, and uh, which makes it more exciting to trade. You can make a lot more money, but it also makes it more dangerous because you can lose everything in a day. Uh, and then the if you are a more conservative trader, then you end up buying expiration. If you're buying, if you're longing uh, options or calls or puts, then you usually do that with 30 or more days to expiration, which is when time to clay. Time decay is the slowest, and uh, this is probably more suited for those of us, me included, um, that are not so, uh, you know, uh, risky uh, with our uh, money and or with our trades. Okay, so let's dive right into uh, an example, and we'll look at uh, the simplest kind of vertical, and uh, which is, uh, sorry, the simplest kind of spread, which is the vertical spread. Okay, so Boeing, uh, we all know, or well, maybe not all of us, but Boeing uh, was a very high flyer, and um, up to a few years ago when they had some issues with uh, basically the most important uh, product line, which was the 737 MAX, and uh, from that moment on, the stock basically uh, just tanked. Uh, I believe the highest was at around 300, somewhere up here. Uh, or higher than this. Um, we'll look at the live chart in a minute. And it has since tanked all the way down to uh, below 125, as we can see here. And it seemed to want to recover and then failed. And then seemed to want to recover again. It failed here. It failed here again. It seemed to want to continue to recover and it failed. And then it mega failed. And then it super mega failed. And now it's back up on track and it's trying to recover. And then you know, it, it has some failures. Obviously, that obviously nothing goes straight up, uh, but it seems that it made a double bottom somewhere around here. And as we know, that is one of the uh, bullish price patterns that we should all know about. And it also seems to coincide with the <clears throat> basically the whole uh, reopening trade. You know, after the pandemic. Uh, there was also a lot of reason why some com why some companies, or in, in this case Boeing, would recover. Uh, it makes a lot of sense that it should. So, technically speaking, we have a double bounce or a double bottom. Excuse me. Uh, technically speaking, we also have a recovery towards this area, which is very important. It was resistance here, resistance here. It was support here, support here, support, and support again. So this is obviously uh, or undisputably a very strong area of uh, reaction, of price action. And uh, basically, well, is it going to recover? Well, this is actually an older chart um, making this video on January 5th. But this is, I believe, a November or uh, possibly December, early December Boeing chart 
when the price of the stock was actually around 179. You can see right here. So it is below this, uh, you know, this zone here. And um, well, basically, what are we, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to take this vertical spread on a stock like Boeing. Okay, so obviously we look at technicals, we look at fundamentals when we talked about this uh, recovery, not only of the company solving its issues, but also with the general market uh, reopening for stocks uh, such as this. Um, and, um, and we, you know, we make sure to remind ourselves of some of those trading rules that we have and we come up with a trade plan. Okay, so let's say that our price target is somewhere between 125 and 200. Let's say that it's somewhere in between um, this area, this general area right here. Okay, so what would happen if you take a call, a single or naked call? It's called uh, naked because you are basically not covered. So that should give you an idea of what kind of trade this is. It's obviously, you know, a dangerous trade because it's naked. You know, you, you're not covered. Okay, so it is very directional. It is the most uh, directional type of trade because you are focused on this thing, uh, on this direction. And you can see the max profit here, as we mentioned uh, before, is infinite. Of course, that never happens. So don't get you know fooled. Don't be fooled by this because it's not really infinite. It never is infinite, which means that this is not real. Okay, um, it is the riskiest. Uh, it is the riskiest because basically uh, your max profit is infinite, but your max loss is also whatever you pay for it. So you could lose everything. Okay, if this one's only worth nine hundred eighty-five dollars, <throat> but a $2,000 or a um, $5,000 call would mean that you are risking basically all of those uh, $10,000 or $5,000, sorry. So it is the riskiest. It, it can go to zero in no time, okay? All right, and um, but of course it has the largest reward, but like I mentioned, beware, it's not infinite. You're never gonna get an infinite amount of money. You're never gonna get infinite minus X. It's just not going to happen. If anything, you're going you're to get double digit returns percentage wise, uh, which means anywhere from 10 to 99%. Uh, and max, I would say 100%, you know, maybe, I mean, you do see trades that go to 300 and even 400, but they are very few and far between. Okay, so that is what the naked call is basically telling us. This is the break even 204. We're buying the 195 call, but it cost us uh, basically a thousand dollars or so. Okay, so um, well, it's actually 985, but this is our break even, and we need this uh, call to basically or this stock to be above our strike, which is. 195 according to the strike of the option that we're buying but remember the break even the break even is the strike price plus the cost which in this case is uh, 985 dollars okay so that's very simple everybody knows long calls let's see what happens when you make it into a spread basically it's still directional but you are hedging or covering yourself in a way so that it is no longer a naked spread you're not uh, so exposed. So how does that happen? Basically, you limit your reward and you limit your risk. So that's the trade-off. So let's look at the numbers now. So now your max profit is not infinite. That's fine. It probably never was. Uh, it's only $1,285. Okay. Uh, and your max loss, so you've limited your profit from infinite down to 1200 But look at this. You also limited your loss limited your risk down from 985 which is what the debit was that you were paying for that call to 715 why because you're actually how are, how is it that you are reducing your exposure or your risk or your max loss or your debit because that 985 is being offset because now you are also selling a call you're not just buying a call so what you do is you still buy the call below the current price, okay? But you sell a call above the current price, which is what this horizontal line does. This horizontal line 
means that you are not going to profit above whatever this price level is here, which is about 205. Okay, so you are only going to make from your break even to this 205, the, from the 192 to the 205. If it keeps going, you're not going to profit from it. Okay, that's not the case in the long call. If you recall, in the long call, after 200 or after 195, you kept going and going and going, and that's why max profit was infinite. All right, so here you're capping your reward, you're capping your gain, and in, in exchange for a limit in your risk, you are reducing your risk from $985 to $715, okay? And that is very easy to do. You basically take whatever long call gets alerted to, and you sell a call on a strike price above, okay? And there is some toying around with these strikes, and that's the last thing we're gonna look at in this video. So originally the call was for 195, okay? Remember right here, you're buying 195. So you're betting that this, which is currently at 179, is gonna reach 195, somewhere up here above this level, okay? Now, when you do the vertical spread, you actually bring your 185 in, and you open up to 205. So what have you done? That means that now this thing could go anywhere between 185, which is lower than 195, and could go all the way to 205. So what you're doing is you're basically opening up how much you, what zone you could be profitable in. Okay, and we actually have another example which we'll look at right now in order to compare this. We, when we take the naked call, we do a 195. Okay. When you do a spread, you can bring this strike in, which means instead of 195, you can buy a 185. But what happens is the 185 is more expensive. But remember why it's more expensive. They're more expensive because they are more probable. The delta is higher on the lower strikes for the calls. Why? Just think about it. It's a lot more likely that it's going to reach 185, being at 179, then it is likely that it's going to reach 195. So when you're buying singles, you you pick your strike price and that's fine. But when you're buying spreads, okay, you can lower that long strike from 195 to 185, which of course makes it expensive, right? But remember, you're selling a call above. So that gives you a credit. So even though you you bought a lower strike, which is more expensive, your complete debit, your net debit in the end, is lower than the 195 call because you're selling the 205 strike against it. Okay, and now let's look and compare it with this other one. This is basically a $20 wide strike because it goes from 185 to 205. That's a $20 difference right there. Here, we're going to compare it to a $10 strike. Okay, so you bring in the 185 to 190, and you bring down the 205 to 200. Now let's look at what that actually looks like on here, okay? So that's our zone, let's say, and this is, of course, uh, already in January. So if we look back at this, uh, okay, yep, that was right here. So that was early December, okay, when this was trying to recover back towards this towards this zone, which is the zone that we are interested in um, uh, as let's say that this is a magnet zone. okay Some people call it a, a demand zone, a, a supply zone, but it's basically a, a support resistance level, which is wherever price reacts to a lot. okay And I had this a little bit wider on the presentation, but that's fine. Basically, if this is headed back towards this zone, which we were, we were right here at the beginning of December, then we're betting that this thing is going to go up to the zone and it might bounce back down or it might break through, which apparently it broke through. But back then, we weren't sure. So we're just betting on the fact that this thing is going to make it to 195. All right. So what we want to do here is if I can find uh, the rectangle to just give you an idea. Okay. Uh, the first strike is 195. The first spread is 
205. 185 would be down here. Okay, to 205. Oh, that didn't work. I think it's one of those tap and release things. Yep, to 205 would be right around here. Okay, so that's how wide our first vertical spread is. Let's look at which one that is. That one is this one right here. Okay, from 185 to 205, that's a very that's a $20 spread. We can make up to $1,200 by risking $700. All right, so that's about you know two to one. Now let's go ahead and look at the other one, which was 190. So this is higher up, 190 to 200. All right, that's that right there. Okay, so we have a much, think of these as dartboards, okay? Your strike has to land somewhere inside this dartboard. Okay, obviously the bigger the dartboard, then the more probable it is that you're gonna hit that strike. The smaller the dartboard, the less probable. Now. Of course, that's reflected on the probability on the profit. Okay, so on this dartboard, okay, it's a bigger dartboard, right? It's 185, 205. Your profit is 1,285. But on this board, you only have you only have a $10 strike. Your max profit is only 642. All right, but look at how again look at how much you're risking, right? So again, the basic idea is that you are um, reducing your debit, which means that you are reducing your max loss, which means that you are limiting your risk, and you are obviously capping your reward because above a certain level, above that uh, short strike, you're not going to make any more money even if the stock keeps going up. So that is basically the trade-off, and that is what happens when you take a vertical spread. Now look at how this, this went down basically from you risking $1,000 to you risking $350. So this is a lot more palatable for a lot of a lot of traders, especially more conservative traders. Okay, so this is why uh, we use spreads. Uh, you wanna take the 190 call? That's what was alerted to, mm, but let me go ahead and sell a call above that. So I'll profit from 190 all the way to 200, but after that, I won't, okay? So let's go ahead and look at the comparison so we can end this video and uh, I'll put the other one out next week. So on the single, you're risking 985. On the vertical wide, we were risking 715. On the vertical tight, we were, work we were risking $350. So that's a very nice comparison on, on how a vertical spread can reduce your risk or your net debit or max loss, however you want to look at it. Um, the reward on the single was infinite, but really, you know, was it really infinite? Not, not, not so sure about that. Uh, not very likely. On the wide vertical, uh, you have a smaller. <clears throat> uh, we reduce the entry. We, we, we are able to bring that entry down closer to at the money, which makes it more probable, right? Uh, on the on the tight vertical, uh, we, in exchange we have this narrower range. So it's a smaller debit, uh, but it's it's also a, a narrower range that you have compared to the vertical wide, which has a wide range, right? <clears throat> okay, um, and then obviously you have a, a a much wider range in which it can be in the money. So you want to buy in the money, uh, which is not necessarily the case in other spreads. Uh, but you can, you know, that's the point. You can buy in the money because you're selling that other call, which reduces your entry, your entry cost, all right? And in the tight vertical, well, obviously it is a much, uh, it is a much smaller range, but you can still buy in the money because it's a vertical, and you can see the difference. I mean, we're talking 50% uh, or sorry, well, yeah, 50% or 100%. Uh, difference between $700 and $300, $350. Okay, so this is why uh, verticals are a lot more appealing. Okay, and uh, and for certain kinds of traders, more conservative traders, because you can go ahead and basically uh, take a trade, which is normally very expensive, which means that it's very likely to be in the money. Because if you've noticed on the options chain, the uh, strikes that are in the money are obviously 
more expensive, but they also have the highest delta. It is more likely that those prices are going to be the final price or are, are going to be in the money uh, when expiry is reached. So the, pro the problem that many traders run into is that they look at the very expensive in the money uh, options and they, they shy away from them. And they'll go and they'll look at the delta on the options chain and they'll end up choosing or they won't look at the delta. What they'll do is they look at the actual price and then they'll be like, mm, do I want to get something that's 900 you know, or so dollars? No, that's too expensive. I want something that's like $300. You know, so I'll go for the $300. But you're actually picking an, op an option that has a much smaller probability of ending up in the money, which means that it's going to go to zero a lot quicker. So, you know, do you really want to take that trade off? Do you really want to go for the cheaper contracts just because they are cheaper, but you have a greater probability of losing everything? Well, in using spreads, and in the case of the vertical spread, you can go ahead and get a smaller debit or smaller price contract, something that's still like $300, or you can get even $200 or $100, um, you know, with the spread, but you're not getting something that's so out of the money, you know? So you're not getting something that's improbable to reach. You are getting those 190, you know, 185 strikes, which are a lot more probable to end up in the money uh, than you would if you go ahead and get something like 225 or something like that, right? So that is the beauty of the spread. And in this case, in this particular case, the vertical spread. Don't go for the cheaper contracts just because they're cheaper, because uh, the cheaper they are on the options chain, as you uh, go higher in price, in strike price, speaking of the, uh, the calls, the cheaper they are, the less probable they are to end up in the money, which means the less probable you are uh, of making money with one of those contracts. So it doesn't really make sense. It makes more sense to get something that's deeper in the money, but that you can hedge and cover with a sold call, okay, or put, because you can do this with puts as well. Um, and that's going to bring your debit down. It's going to bring your risk down, but you're still buying a high quality contract, which is that 190 call. All right. So I hope that this was useful. If you have any questions on spreads, then go ahead and, uh, um, and get them out of the way because in the next video we're going to be looking at uh, other kinds of spreads which are not necessarily directional, which are more neutral. Uh, and that is, or you can skew them a little bit towards a direction, but and that is basically, well, um, where, where delta and theta and vega really come into play. So I hope to see you guys in the next video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and go ahead and uh, look for us on Twitter as well as on Xcord, of course, our community, and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great one.